Uh, this is Smart Transit. This is uh, an example application of how you can ingest and process different uh, real-time data feeds and periodic data feeds from different things in transit. Obviously, you can uh, change it, use your own REST endpoints or GTFS endpoints that are available in your region or where you're interested in. But this seems like a, a fun application of using things like Apache NiFi, Apache Pulsar, Apache Flink, different projects. Hopefully you're in the right place. If you're not, then uh, there's a lot of other good talks going on today. Uh, there is uh, a good Pulsar talk, I believe, going on at the same time. I know the schedule is a little uh, maybe slightly off, but check the sessions. You know, go there uh, often. They change. They update. You know, there's different things going on. Uh, if you have any questions, put them in the Q&A or put them in the chat. I'm pretty closely watching those. Should be able to see what's going on there. Uh, if you were in my talks yesterday on NiFi and deep learning, uh, you're going to see some uh, similar things in the demo. There's, uh, you know, a couple things reused, but not too much. Uh, potentially, David's with me today. I think he might uh, be in another session, but uh, he's helped out with some of this, and he's written a really awesome book on Pulsar. If you go to uh, streamnative.com, uh, there you could sign up and get uh, a free digital version. It's uh, just about in final release there. It is, it is the book. You want to learn about Pulsar? I'm uh, that's my uh, evening readings. It's uh, got everything you need in there. This is me. You might remember me last year. I did way too many talks on NiFi and some of the other topics. I used to work at a different company. I'm at Stream Native now, focusing on Pulsar, but also, you know, still doing NiFi, doing a lot of Flink, especially Flink SQL, and uh, any other. Apache project I could get my hands on. I'm uh, very interested in some of the uh, new ones we have out for uh, data. There's a lot of really cool ones. Uh, I got links to everything here. So if you want to know more on the topics, more examples, articles, they'll be linked here. I will post all of these uh, talks, all the source code uh, later today. I, I can't post the video. Uh, the Apache uh, community posts that uh, when they're able to. I don't know how long it takes to process the recordings from Hoppin, uh, but they will appear in uh, Apache's uh, YouTube. So look forward to those. If you've missed something or you want to just take a refresher, go back, see things, just let me know. I'll uh, make sure I tweet out a link once I see it. I call the software that I'm using together for doing this uh, smart transit or real-time transit, uh, whatever you want to call it. I call that the flip stack. This is because I'm often using Flink, Pulsar together. I call it the flipping stack, which is kind of funny. Uh, if I add NiFi in there, I don't know. I'm still, still debating on the name. If anyone's uh, interested in writing additional flip demos and apps and wants to write some docs or contribute, Everything's open source, so just uh, connect away, you know, uh, post uh, something on GitHub. I got all my contact information out there. So one of the easiest environments to run Pulsar and Flink is stream native in the cloud. It's got uh, Kubernetes there to make sure everything starts up properly. You know, you don't have to worry about metrics spinning it up. Makes it a lot easier. Uh, the Apache standalone one is very solid and well-documented, but sometimes you, you want it a little easier, especially if you're doing it for, uh, you know, you do that with your company, you want full support. Uh, Pulsar functions are cool. Uh, I'm not doing any today there. I think in a follow-up, I'll have a couple Pulsar functions, see if I can 
correlate different transit feeds together. So maybe we could build a smart way for you to get from point A to point B. For now, I'm based in New Jersey, which happens to have a lot of transit options. So I'd probably do it from the point of view of someone leaving New Jersey, going to New York City, maybe visiting that new uh, giant Google headquarters there or any of those cool buildings you got over there. You know, this will tell you, hey, there's an accident on this highway. Don't drive or switch to this road or, oh, you should take the bus or no, take light rail or take the train. You know, maybe even take the ferry. I haven't found the API for that one yet, though, but we'll see. Gives you lots of options. I deploy this anywhere. Makes it pretty easy. I'm not uh, stuck on one cloud or platform. And uh, pretty cool way to do it. Lots of cool open source uh, frameworks I'm using today, yesterday, and tomorrow in different applications. NiFi shows up a lot. It's a nice way to integrate all these different projects. Pulsar is the glue in the gateway that keeps everything going. S send all that data there. Sometimes it will immediately go to a sync, like, say, Trino, or it will go to, uh, you know, any uh, Apache uh, data store or S3 or wherever it needed to, to go. And then if I need to do deeper analytics, I could do them with Pulsar functions or Flink. And two things I wanted to point out in some of my demos, I'll use some of the uh, Pulsar adapters that let Pulsar do other protocols. So I can have Pulsar act as a native MQTT broker, which proves very powerful and helpful for IoT apps. And Kafka on Pulsar that lets me uh, emulate Kafka in case maybe I have a legacy app that's using Kafka. I don't have to rewrite anything, just point it to a different broker, and then I get my messages. Now, I'll show you in the demo, but I want a lot of this in the slides. So you have those to take away because you won't have, uh, you know, the video right away. Um, this is an example of why I like NiFi. In a couple of easy steps without knowing specific fields too deep, I want to add fields, maybe update a field. I can do that in a couple of steps, whether it's JSON, XML, Avro, lots of different records. does it for me very simply. So uh, one of the main apps I'm going to show you today is how you can ingest a real-time data if it's a geo RSS feed, which is a type of JSON. And I'll also do the same thing for RSS, which is a type of XML. Transform it, split it apart, clean it up, and show you some of those real feeds. Uh, Transcom is a local group here in uh, New Jersey, where I'm based, that covers the New Jersey, New York area, and covers a whole bunch of different uh, transit systems. They give you one source every minute of real-time updates on what's going on. Again, that's a really nice source of data. Uh, some other sources of data that you might want to look at if you're doing anything with transit is you definitely want to look at weather data. You want to look at uh, Twitter data, other social media data, because that will help you augment what's going on. Again, for the part two, I'm thinking maybe have a Pulsar function starts joining those together to say, oh, the weather's bad. Maybe you don't want to take a ferry or rain. I know the train's going to be uh, a best option versus a bus. There'll be delays on the roads, those sort of things. Now, not every data source out there is JSON, XML, text file, or an image. It may be GTFS. GTFS is a transit format based on protobuf. It is a little weird. Like when I saw it, it's very heavyweight. There's a lot of information in there. I made a custom processor to process those, make it a little uh, easier to process. So that's available. So if you get one of those JTFS feeds, I've got a link to the source code in GitHub. It's Apache licensed. It is beta. So please, uh, you know, return back any uh, bug fee, uh, bugs you find or comments, suggestions. I'm open for you to uh, put a ticket out there. Just let me know or fork it and fix it. You know, that's a great thing of open source. You know, it's uh, pretty straightforward. It's based on the Google GTFS Java library. Pretty straightforward. 
but it does the basics you need. So if your data format isn't uh, one of the simple ones, this will help you uh, process it. I took a little break in here so we can go into uh, some demos and I'll show you what's going on with uh, the transit data. Now, let me post this link here to the source code so you can follow along if you want. So the first thing I do is I built up a topic for Pulsar so I could put in my transit data. Now, the nice thing if I'm using the NIFI Pulsar connector that uh, David wrote, it will build those topics for me if they're missing. So I've got a thing that dynamically creates new topics uh, for other sources of data. You'll see there's a ton of different uh, transit data out there. So you might want to uh, have it a little flexible. Here is how you consume data. Pretty straightforward if you want to test. This comes with the uh, Pulsar install if you want. This is the client for consuming. Just put in the topic. Give it a name so it's uh, as a name subscription. And then it'll get the data. You can consume one at a time or have a continuous. This is a good way to test. Make sure things showed up. And, you know, you got your data. Great way to do that. Now, if I want to query it in Flink, now if I use something like uh, what's available from Stream Native, I don't need to do this. This will look at the schema in there and build a table for me. But if you want to control the table, if you want to use the standalone Flink, it is very easy for you to create a table. You know what your fields look like. You look at your fields, like for mine, this is JSON. I can create an Avro or JSON schema. I know the fields. Uh, I can pick the types. I can be more specific on the types if you want Booleans or numbers. The safest string, uh, I can always convert them in my queries. This makes it a little more straightforward for, uh, you know, you don't have to worry about type conversion or anything, or if you're not sure what data is getting in there. So I'll show you when I'm parsing uh, these transcoms where I get these fields from. But it's pretty basic. If you've seen RSS feeds, some of those fields will look familiar. Connector is pretty simple. We have to say it's the Flink Pulsar connector because Flink can connect to a lot of different streaming sources, which is pretty awesome. Uh, it's JSON. For you, it could also have been Avro. could have been something else. JSON seems to be the uh, cleanest. I like that. I'm using a local Pulsar. I could have connected this to, you know, my stream native one that I have running over here. But that's uh, up to you what you're using. I'll see if I have my uh, SQL running here. See, this one's a little easier. It's got a catalog here. So I could just go through there and see where I have data and see all my tables. Pretty straightforward to do, just to give you an idea. You know, you don't have to uh, do it by hand. You know, it's pretty straightforward. And, you know, you have access to all your topics. Uh, see the schema. This is a little easier than uh, going through the command line. But, you know, depends what's up for you. So, we, so you have that table created for Flink. So now you can do queries on it. This is an example of that formatted data. It's got a title. This is the title for that uh, feed of data, description of what's going on, a date that it came out, a point, uh, and I parse that point into Latin long so I know where it is. I put a timestamp in there of when I processed it so you can get those different times to know because sometimes you might have old data, but you'll know, hey, I processed it now, so that's when they sent it to me. You know, just make it easy for you. So we've had these structures built, like uh, in here, there's Flink. I could just build this table if I'm running my own cluster and I don't want to use uh, some cloud-based one or I'm just learning or getting used to it. It's pretty easy to use this environment here. You know, you could describe the table and then you could just start running your basic SQL. It's a little easier somewhere like... Uh, uh, stream native where you have uh, a simple interface here and you can browse all your tables 
get an idea what the fields are makes for uh, a pr an easier environment for you and you know what you're doing there you know that that's up to you you know it depends on what system you're comfortable with let me show you uh some more uh, source code so if you're interested in any of the things i'm talking about they're all in my uh github there there's potentially more fields in here and more things going on than you, you might ever want to see but uh you know that's up to you <laughs> you know what you're interested in doing so let's take a look at uh, a couple of different transit flows i have here and then we'll uh trace it through trace the data and then you can see what's going on once we get to uh, a final point again if you have any questions any uh, thing you'd like to see, you know, if I'm not showing you what's the most interested for you right now, please let me know. I'll focus there. Uh, I have a bunch of different demos here. I could start and stop them. I can move around. Not that critical for me. Whatever is uh, most interesting, let me know. This is uh, driven by what uh, you're interested in. So if uh, that's uh, some other part of this. Let me know. Everyone's favorite place, the command line. I'm going to uh, send some data over here just to uh, make sure I have data coming in. I'm sending that into that uh, stream native thing securely over SSL. So I'll get some data over there. But let, let's go into the transit data. This is Apache NiFi. If you haven't seen Apache NiFi, go to uh, NiFi Apache Org, download it. You can run it securely in cloud, Docker, wherever you might be interested in running. Very straightforward to do. Like I mentioned, you could do things like weather. Weather comes in very handy for transit data. Here, I'm just going to run an example instance of weather. Uh, why I wanted to show you this is we're doing something you might not be able to do with other tools. And that uh, is being able to take a feed that is a compressed zip file of data. Pull that in, unpack it, unzip it, convert it from uh, individual XMLs into JSON. Once I have it in JSON, you know, parse it apart, get it ready. Here I put a thing to slow down how quickly I'm sending the data. You might not think that's a, a concern, but it has been a concern. It has, uh, I have sent data too fast somewhere. Uh, for here, it's really just so you can see data moving. Otherwise, it processes thousands of records a second, even on my laptop. And that might, uh, you know, be uh, concerning. You, you try to see a demo and it passes you in a second. One thing that's nice with NiFi is that if I want to pause something, maybe because I haven't written what happens next, or say I want to change something, like, okay, that's where the topic is, that's fine. If I don't want that, I can uh, change it, then restart it. You saw here there's a little queue that is uh, configurable and dynamically configurable and load balanceable. So, you know, this will make sure... You know, nothing's lost, even though I started and stopped things. So weather data may be one source of data you want to apply to your analytics. Obviously, you could start searing some time series data. I've got time, location, and a weather point. Then we'll add transit data, time point, and a location. You could start matching those up together. You could do that with Flink SQL. I could do that with Pulsar Functions. You kind of get that idea. Lots of different data sources here. This is the, that transcom data. It's actually Connecticut in there too. So that's a lot of different data sources. This I can collect as frequently as once a minute. Uh, that's going to produce a lot of data pretty quickly as I'm grabbing the uh, GORSS feed for it. And then once I get that, I'm converting from that to uh to json and then i'm splitting it apart 
I'm doing some conversions. Here is where I can make some decisions. Right here, I couldn't think of a SQL that I needed. But here is where I could put something that says, filter out things if there's no delay or there's no keywords that I'm looking for. I may only be interested if there's a crash, a delay. You know, you might want to take all this data, drop it into, say, solar, search through it and get common terms or do that with an NLP processing, get all my terms and see, okay, which ones have effect on what I'm interested in. If it just tells me status okay or nothing going on, maybe I just ignore that. Don't process things that aren't interesting. That's up to you. Now, there's a couple of fields on there that I wanted to add. Uh, these are ones that make sense for me. I add a unique ID and I add a timestamp. I also make a placeholder for Latin long. Again, I want that detailed uh, location data. So I'm going to take this. This point data is a weird format. They make it a tab delimited set of Latin long. I don't want to query on that. That's not the best for me doing SQL, whether it's in Flink SQL or somewhere else. So I take that out. Take out any white space. As you see, I could do regex on that, which is kind of cool. And here I'm just setting that Latin long by parsing that point column. So now I've got a cleaned up version of this data that I'm going to send to Pulsar after I split it out. And you see here, I put that same control record there because just too fast to see it happen. I want to be able to see the data happen. Makes for a better demo. You don't really need that if uh, if you're not concerned about it. So we've got it through Pulsar. I'm looking at the uh, the lineage here to see what uh, is going on with this data. This is getting sent to uh, a Pulsar topic that can be used in Flink SQL, can be used in a regular consumer. You get pushed right to a mobile app or web app. And these are the fields that I thought were important. So this is today, a couple hours ago. It's telling me where that was in the Latin long. Again, I could put this on a map in, a, say, a Jupyter notebook. And I got that timestamp, so I got the time series. And I've got the data that they published that uh, announcement out. Again, something like security, you know, that may not change. Here it's, you know, up until three, but they'll keep sending that every minute. So that's where you might decide if you want to uh, dedupe things and say, hey, let me parse that out, do some smart sentiment on that and say, well, that says until three, this gives me uh, a highway. I can parse that lanes. You know, if you were building a really complex map, you could get down to the level that say, hey, avoid one and nine north uh, in this specific location until three o'clock because you know, they have a lane closed, but there's three others available. You can monitor the time in and out and uh, figure out if that's a place you should send people or not. Again, your own applications may vary. So we've got that out. That's going to Pulsar. That's one source of data. And that was the one we were looking at in this table. And I can run any of my uh, real-time analytics there, whatever makes sense for me. That got pushed to Pulsar, so that could go to that Flink table or another app. That is one source of data. Up here, I've got uh, other sources of data that I'm sending out. Depends on what I need to uh, use there. I maybe have my own sensors in my vehicles to say this is smart transit for, you know, my trucks in the area or my employees. I may have uh, devices with them that could monitor things. Maybe I have sensors at my office that'll show out front or the nearby roads. I can grab their cameras and other things. Here, I'm grabbing some public RSS feeds. Again, good source of data. These usually aren't as updated as frequently as something like Transcom is or something like the MTA or a lot of the large... Uh, uh, transit authorities will have pretty frequent updates, if not down to the second. Some will let you subscribe, so they will push it to you. Sometimes that's WebSockets. 
sometimes you you give them a rest endpoint and they call you. There's a couple of options there. Sometimes that's through that GTFS we mentioned. A couple different ways. I want to show you how easy it is. I'm grabbing bus rail and light rail updates. I can put this in another format. Just makes it easy to see all the different things occurring here. So, you know, if there's uh, an event happening, pretty easy to see. But now, as you saw, it's pretty generic. I take in that URL from that first thing, translate things because they're all RSS. Pretty simple. Turn that XML RSS into JSON. Split it apart. Here I'm pulling out uh, the specific fields of interest. Sometimes they'll have extra fields. These are the generic ones I'm interested in. So I make sure that it's everyone knows it's JSON. I add a couple of fields for me, that timestamp and, and a unique ID. Very important in time series data. Very important for any data. If your data comes in without a unique ID and without a timestamp, I recommend always adding them. Uh, the company name, service name, that tells me like, okay, this was the New Jersey bus line. This was, you know, this private uh, train system, you know, whatever that may be. And I'm sending that to Pulsar. I'm also querying that and sending it to a Slack channel. So that's uh, sending it to the transit Slack channel I have. And that's over here. And that's just giving me updates. This might be, I want to send uh, transit notices to uh, a uh, Slack channel at work so people know, hey, you know, this bus is late, whatever it might be. Maybe we even break it down to individual, you know, things. Okay, I want one for buses, one for trains, maybe one for a specific bus line. So before you uh, leave the office, you can quickly check it. You know, if you have to go into the office, let's make it as painless as possible. You're not uh, suffering there. So we sent it out. Very similar. I have this isolated the thing that gets the code and processes it to the one that sends it to Pulsar. Now I can make this a reusable module and have everyone use it. Can you merge flow files from different streams in NiFi? Not really. That's there. There's. I'll, I I say no, but I I know a couple people who've done it, but it is beyond painful. NiFi is not really designed to do that. What I recommend is to push it to Pulsar, get it in two different topics. That's very straightforward. Have some way to, that you'll be able to connect them. That is always the problem with a merge. Like when we do uh, a merge record, merging things, you have to have something in common. That's why I had that. make sure you have a unique ID, a timestamp a location so that when you want to connect them later, because yeah, I could see what already, what I want to connect. I want to connect this transcom data. I would like to try to connect it to the transit data and I'd like to connect it to the weather data. Now, the way you would do that is uh, you would join that in Flink SQL. That's your best option of doing that because Flink SQL has joins. So I could just join together, you know, I want the transit data, the transcom, and the weather. And I would just uh, connect it on, uh, you know, say, uh, let's just to give you an idea. This is where you want to make sure they have something in common so you can join them. Yeah, you can push it to Snowflake. Yeah, yeah, Kafka. Mo most things have a way to merge streams. NiFi is kind of separated from that. It usually works on one stream at a time. So I would merge it with Flink or with Pulsar or wherever, wherever that message is going, you know, or push it to separate tables and, like they said, Snowflake or an open source database and just join them together. We all know, uh, you know, how to join things in... Uh, in a database, same idea, you know, maybe I'm joining it on uh, lat and long, you know, that sort of thing. You could do that in a couple of places. 
Uh, generally, you want to do that natively in NiFi. Merging together those points is a little tricky. Now, it's not impossible. There is, let's see if I have an example here. There is a way that sort of answers your question. I don't know if you want to do it. Uh, let's see if I have it here. Look up what that is. Do I have one in here? Yeah, I might have one up here. I'll, I'll show you. What you can do is I have a data coming in from Kafka or Pulsar or wherever. I can add a lookup record and then add entire set of record or fields from that and merge them together. Because the thing with NiFi is I could always add things to it. So I can add attributes and I can add records. So here I can make a rest call and the rest call could be to anything. I can make a rest call to Pulsar, get back a full record that matches some key. You know, I'm sending to this service uh, a bunch of different fields. This could be the one to do a join. So that could be your way that you do uh, a join. Is that as fast as... Uh, is doing it in Flink SQL or uh, Kafka or Pulsar? Probably not. Uh, if you're not dealing with a lot of data or you're more interested in keeping all the logic in one place, you could do it. Because see here, I can make a call out to say Elastic, uh, HBase, Mongo, uh, where else? Couchbase. Database record will give me anyone with a JDBC. So that'll give me a click house and, uh, you know, a uh, ton of different data stores. How many people have a JDBC store? So grab that record based on a key, bring those records in and uh, update those fields from the data that came back. You know, pretty straightforward. We did a little bit of those updates here with the update record, but this data could be coming from somewhere else. I could do uh, a lookup, grab some fields, and connect them. So that is a way to do it. Uh, so merging is possible. Again, do you want to merge in NiFi? Do you want to do it in once it gets to Pulsar or Kafka? Do you want to do it in something like a Pulsar function? Do you want to do it in Flink SQL to join? Or do you want to wait till the tables arrive in Aerospike, Snowflake? Couch base, click house, you know, a ton of different data stores, Starburst, whatever it lands in, and then uh, join them then. Depends on your use case. Like I said, uh, if, if you were doing real time analytics, I might want to do get this data as fast as possible into Apache Pulsar and then have Flink join them and do the analytics right there. And then, you know, figure out what happens next after that really depends on how quickly you need that data. And, you know, what what are those merges? So, yeah, it's kind of the long way around your answer. It's not uh, it would be nice if it was, you know, join two streams and I could just join them together, you know, based on, uh, you know, something. The uh, merge record can combine flow files together. Again, getting those getting those together in the right way is kind of, uh, you know, the lookup record is easier or doing it later is better, you know, unless you're planning to make this giant thing. I, I, I'd rather do it somewhere else. Uh, Pulsar stores... Pulsar has a lot of different ways that it stores data. It stores, uh, we, we have a couple of talks on that. If you want to go through the different uh, storage and how deep you want to go into that, it has built-in schema registry. So it could be stored as JSON, stored as uh, Avro, stored as, you know, just like you said, a, a, a clob or something. There's... This get proto, it's, it's really deep. <laughs> you can, uh, if you go through here, uh, you know, you could spend a lot of time looking on how different storage formats. You have a lot of options, uh, more so than you'd see elsewhere. You know, 
You know, it could be raw bites. It could be a string. It could be uh, something that's uh, managed with a schema. There's a lot of options there. Let me post that in there. Yeah, I don't know which one you prefer, but uh, you've got options depending on how you put it in there. You know, I, I tend like with Nifides pushing it in for this particular data is JSON with a schema. That makes it a little easier. Uh, depends on what you're doing. Okay, where were we? I was looking in, did we show you this one? I think I showed you this one. Show you another one. This is an example. Uh, New York City has a lot of different uh, REST endpoints to grab data, grab things like uh, traffic speed. Again, you may want to join all these sources together while they're coming in. Again, that's where I start thinking Flink. You know, Flink does some really nice joins pretty easily and scales out as big as you need to. You know, it doesn't matter. It's CSV, JSON, XML. I can maybe convert that into just JSON or into Avro, then push that into Pulsar Topics to do in my joins later. Another thing we could do is don't only have to process text, JSON, record data here. You know, we might be doing, uh, you know, different types of data, you know, including images. So here is I'm pulling in some uh, transit uh, camera feeds and, you know, I could push those to Slack. I could do an out re uh, deep learning on them whatever makes sense for my use case. Again, another source of data that I don't want to, maybe I don't want to merge that one with uh, JSON because this is uh, a traffic cam. But again, I might m do some deep learning on here to go, okay, there's too many cars there. Don't go that way. You know, you got a couple different options there with the different fields from those uh, transit images. Just to give you an idea, it's not just, we're not just processing text data or JSON data or Avro data or CSV data or protobuf or GTFS. It's also could be images. And I, I don't recommend putting images into Pulsar or Kafka. It's not really, not really a great idea. Okay, so we got that. We went through weather data. Again, as you're seeing, that was a good suggestion of yeah merging this data together and whether you do it here in pulsar in flink depends on your use case again if you've got a fast uh, data store you may want to uh, wait till you get there you know or pull out certain fields beforehand or have some stateless application running that's uh, looking at individual ones, giving you the latest ones, or maybe you have a stateful Flink app that's keeping uh, a join of data together in the latest ones to let you know what's the current state of the world. And that's across all these different weather dimensions, or you might be feeding it into uh, machine learning or deep learning that could do uh, deeper analysis on that. That's up to you, depending on your level of uh, requirements there on your real time. It really depends on uh, what makes sense for your use case. Do we have any more questions there? Just looking to make sure we're not missing any. And I could go deeper into NiFi. Or well, let's make sure we get through all our slides here. Yeah, common use case. I've got a bunch of different APIs to go into NiFi, aggregate them, you know, pu through Pulsar, Flink, and Pulsar functions can process them. Depends on what you need to do. You know, if you're doing like, say, a Jupyter notebook, you know, I could put all those points on a, uh, on a map and then have uh, additional data with them. So if I know where I'm going, you know, I could zoom in and see what's going on. Or again, could fill that into other kinds of dashboards or tables. Got links to more articles to describe uh, 
different processes, different things you can do. And I've got a couple of uh, free stuff and uh, very cool uh, another conference coming up because there's always another conference. We got two free books and a uh, conference coming up. So uh, if you're interested in Pulsar or Pulsar and Flink or Pulsar and NiFi, definitely check that out. And for my last couple of minutes, if I don't see up, oh, a custom processor. A uh, custom processor in NiFi is not as hard as a Flink app. It's closer to writing a small Spring Boot app if you've done Spring Boot. You know, it, it's very, uh, yeah, it's much closer to a simple microservice. Let me let me show you an example one. Yeah, here's one. I wrote this one to work with Tika. There's a Maven archetype, builds out uh, the default uh, boilerplate stuff, and including all these directories and the POM files you need. I think there's one for Gradle as well. Uh, it builds a lot of this generic code. You put your own packages on there. The, you know, you put uh, names some tags. Pretty straightforward. And then you have any kind of attributes coming in. Uh, you know, success, fail conditions. That's pretty boilerplate. And then the body of it, this, this is your main method. Now, I could call an existing library pretty easy here. My source code for Teak is so simple that I just put it in line. And this just grabs the, uh, gives you access to the raw input stream. I send that through uh, into uh, Tika. Tika does some magic on it, gives me some raw text. And I replace the content with that. And I'm done. You know, set a couple attributes. It's, that's a whole uh a whole uh, custom processor, or you could take an existing one and do it on your own. I've created a couple here. It, they're really straightforward. They're all in my GitHub. You know, some are for deep learning, some are for uh, different conversions, NLP. I've got one that uh, sends things to Twitter. Don't know if that's a good idea, but I do it. Uh, there's my GTFS one. Uh, do I have any more here? Yeah, I, I, I created a couple different names before I figured out uh, what uh, package structure I liked. But, uh, you know, doesn't matter. Can you post the slides URL? Yeah, I'm going to uh, – I'll show you where I'm going to put it. I did not uh, make a PDF of it yet and post it. But I'm going to post it at this link, and I'll tweet it out, and I'll put it in LinkedIn. And I'll put it in the group ApacheCon chat. Also, if you see something missing, I have another talk at uh, like two hours or an hour. I think I get a short break in there. And this is uh, an AJI app. This is uh, IoT data. Again, NiFi, Flink, Pulsar. Uh, if you're interested, come to that one. That's going to have, uh, I'll go deeper into this. And if you have any more questions, we can cover it at that uh, talk. Otherwise, uh, thanks for joining. I'll give you back a uh, couple of minutes. If I don't see anything else. Hopefully that's enough for you for custom processor. If you search a custom processor for NiFi, you'll find a couple of good uh, articles there. It's not too hard. Or again, you could take one of mine, fork it, and uh, start from there. Uh, easiest application to write, though, would be just to write a Flink SQL. <laughs> write a SQL statement to do your app. Pretty easy to do, you know, joins or whatever. Or you could write uh, uh, Pulsar functions that are pretty straightforward. The one advantage here is the NiFi stuff is Java only. Flink, you got a couple more options, but uh, here, the uh, Pulsar functions, you got Java, you got Python Go. It gives you uh, a nice set of uh, languages to choose from, but uh, pretty straightforward. Everything's well documented here if you're interested in looking at Pulsar functions. They are pretty lightweight. 
and a, a, probably a little easier than doing NiFi because you don't have to, uh, you know, build it, compile it. It's, it's, it's a little a little more straightforward to be able to deploy it in a Pulsar function, but and having that option to do it in Python is kind of nice. Uh, but that's up to you. There's so many different options to extend how you write your applications. It's really up to you. If you uh, if you like doing it uh, with an i5 processor, that's great. If you want to do it in Flink, you want to do a Pulsar function, or write just your own custom app in, you know, Python, Node.js, Go, whatever. Lots of options. Uh, I will let everyone go. I hope you enjoy your time at ApacheCon. If you want, I have that other talk coming up soon. It will cover NiFi uh, and Pulsar and Flink for Edge apps. Should be pretty interesting. And then tomorrow I do a, another deep dive on NiFi. Check them out. Thanks for coming. I will see you at other events in ApacheCon. Thank you.